Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reactions module. This is video number 15, uh, just going into a little bit more detail about reaction spontaneity. What we want to do now is to work through a couple of examples. Uh, these examples have come out of the uh, Chemistry in Focus um, textbook. And um, so just want to put that out there as the example that uh, as the source of each of these questions. But what's useful, I think, whether or not we're using that textbook is to go through each of these types of reactions and see if we can identify whether or not we expect these to be spontaneous and or whether or not our value about uh, Gibbs free energy can can tell us anything about that. So the first reaction type are what we call type one reactions. These react as soon as they are mixed and there's a little bit of a clue there. Um, so when we put magnesium into hydrochloric acid, we get uh, bubbles of hydrogen as the magnesium displaces the hydrogen from the solution. Uh, I hope quite obviously this will be regarded as a spontaneous reaction. Now, if we pop down the bottom here, our delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And what we're looking for here is our enthalpy change. So in an endothermic reaction, this will be positive. In an exothermic reaction, this will be negative. Um, it's possible also that we're going to end up with uh, uh, gases being produced and when we go to something that's producing gases we are creating a greater degree of disorder as the particles scatter around so this one is going to be uh, positive and when we uh, multiply that by the positive uh, t, t can, it's not going to be zero and certainly not going to be negative because it's in Kelvin uh, so we're going to get a very very definitely negative value for our Gibbs free energy and therefore we have a spontaneous reaction. In the type 2 reactions these don't react at room temperature but if we warm them a little bit if we add a spark um, then we get a uh, reaction and sometimes quite a specific or uh, quite a uh, violent kind of a reaction which is what happens when we warm magnesium uh, over a Bunsen burner flame. Now uh, if you leave the magnesium just sitting in the room, it will slightly uh, corrode, it will uh, oxidize, but it doesn't do it in the spectacular way that we see when we warm it up. When we warm it up, we get a huge amount again of uh, energy being released. It's again an exothermic reaction. Um, the product, of course, is a solid magnesium oxide. And so in this case, we've actually got um, some uh, uh, decrease in the entropy. We're actually creating um, some order out of disorder. If you think about the fact that oxygen is a gas and therefore that gas is going to be moving randomly, there's going to be a lot of disorder. When we put the oxygen and the magnesium together into a solid, we're going to have some order about that. So now we're looking at the comparison between the, each of these two terms. One of the things that's important in this reaction, of course, is that the fact that it is exothermic, releasing so much energy, is helping to drive that process. And hence we have, again, for type 2, a spontaneous reaction. So I'm going to skip down to type 4. Where type 4 reactions do not occur even when very high temperatures are maintained. For example, you can have very high temperatures uh, that you can uh, use for the heating of water, but whilst that uh, water may go from a solid to a liquid to a gas and perhaps very fast moving gas molecules, very high entropy, they will not be necessarily decomposed. This obviously is a non spontaneous reaction. Uh, and it's a non-spontaneous reaction because um, despite the very high temperatures that we have here, this value, which would, can be very, very large, um, we are not um, uh, having anything occurring in this particular process. So therefore, a non-spontaneous reaction. Then the type 3 reactions, which we skipped over, let's have a quick look at those. These do not react 
uh, unless we continuously heat them. They don't generate sufficient energy as they progress, so they must be constantly supplied with heat. So here we have uh, copper carbonate, for example, which would be a solid, which when we add heat to it, would decompose into copper oxide, which is also a solid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So the fact that this is going to produce a gas is going to increase the degree of disorder. So we do have um, some disorder happening here. Um, but this one needs to constantly be supplied with heat. So we've got a positive value here. We need to keep adding heat into the system in order for us to have this system continue. If the value of the delta S value over here um, multiplied by T gives us an order of magnitude that is larger than our uh, delta H value, then that is going to tip us over into a negative value. But if the value of delta H is too high, then that is going to, even with a large negative value subtracted from it, still remain positive. And if the delta G stays positive, then the reaction will be non-spontaneous. One of the things that's very important is to look at the amount of heat that's being added in each of these situations to see what happens once sufficient energy uh, has been added to start the reaction to see where the reaction is going to go after that. So for each of these, we could hopefully draw a, a, a very simplified uh, energy profile diagram to give us a little bit of an idea about how the enthalpy change uh, is manifesting itself in these particular reactions and also to help us to understand um, some of the issues associated with spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions. Just a bit of an intro and certainly some more stuff we'll look at in the classroom. Thanks for watching.